Hey everybody, quick disclaimer on this video. If you ever have a problem on a restoration that we had, or you're just doing stuff on your own project, or for a friend, or even a client, um, you have an issue, call the manufacturer of the part you're putting in that you're having difficulty with. Okay, everybody, I just wanted to show you something very interesting here that uh, has arisen from running the vehicle. Now, it wouldn't have shown itself in an electrical diagnostic setup where I have the wiring laid out and I do my final tests and stuff because you wouldn't think this would happen, but it kind of does. So this took a little bit of a confirmation from Edelbrock to verify what I kind of figured was already going on with this truck. And it's interesting and it's going to happen to a lot of people that are intermixing electronics. So let me show you. Okay, so on Doyce's 53 Ford, we have the battery in the stock location. And when you install a fuel injection setup, they want, they want these wires, okay, mounted in here permanently so it can feed the ECU 100%, okay? My ECU is up under there, I'll show you. And when I was setting the truck up and finaling things out, I didn't want the ECU going hot, so I just unplugged it and let it just be there, so it's no big deal. But when I went hot with it and I keyed it over, we run, we learn, we do everything, and we transfer data to the Dakota Digital from the Edelbrock so we can run the tack, and then we run the fans on the relay circuit using the grounding from the ECU. So that's all good. Then you shut the vehicle off. And then when you shut the vehicle off, the PCM, or the ECU if you want to call it that, um, will want to uh, go to sleep. Well, something kept feeding back from the breakout box that runs the Dakota Digital Dash, and it kept giving it some juice, and it wouldn't let it come to go to sleep. It was like annoying this controller. It just didn't like seeing something, so it just wouldn't shut the IAC off under the hood. You could hear it cycling. And then we have a main relay under here, and the main relay would not shut off. But if you unplugged here, it would all go away, and you plugged it back in. It's all back to normal until you key cycle again. So I knew my wiring is correct. What did I share across the board? And I'll show you what we did. All right, everybody, there is the breakout box, okay? I call it that. But what it does is you put your input and output signals into that box, and that's for your Dakota Digital. Here is my tack wire. I labeled it, you see the little yellow label there, and that goes right up into this cavity over here. I'm a little blurry because it's not easy to do this job, okay? And then buried way up in there is my ECU, but that's okay. The ECU is right up in there. That's the wiring harness that comes down, and there's my input and outputs and stuff, and there's that wire. I disconnected that. And there is the massive relay. That runs everything, okay? Everything that goes through the ECU is a very low voltage, works a ground circuit solely. But the output that we need for the wave to translate for the tachometer has to go through this wire. And that was the wire that that unit would not let go to sleep because it kept feeding back. For some reason, Dakota Digital has a lot of uh, input outputs, and it seems like in their electronic board here, it likes to feed it back a little bit. What I am going to do is put a diode in, and I'll show you. So a diode is very, very simple. And I've had bags of these over the years. I just keep them in stock. And this is something that I actually purchased to shut the daytime running lights off on a 2001 Sonoma because the BCM needs a certain free, um, something off the sensor anyway without feeding it back. It'll shut it off. So anyway, that's what we did. That was a long time ago. Um, so anyway, we have a diode. I'm going to show you what this is. It's basically a check valve. It'll allow current only to flow one way, but not the other way. Okay? And that's what that diagram shows. It shows you the direction of where the current's going to flow, and you can test it with a multimeter if you want, and a 12-volt supply and whatever. So this diode is going to stop the noise from transferring back to the PCM and causing us a lot of grief, and, not let the, and so it'll let the PCM go to sleep. So nothing from the Dakota Digital could go back into the PCM 
and keep it alive and keep the relay on and the IX cycling and everything. This will be the quick fix. And this is the only fix that I know of from Edelbrock to, to Coda Digital to stop this noise. And I have no idea if it's working on Holly or not, but this is something we've come across. We did not have this on Hanks because we used autometer gauges and we didn't see any feedback into the PCM sharing the TAC on the same circuit. But for some reason, the board on the Dakota Digital gives a little residual in that line and it's just enough to annoy the PCM. This will be the fix. All right, everybody, we're going to go back under the dash. I'm going to show you what I did. It's a pain in the neck. Um, I also put it in and then I took it out and I ran another wire off another circuit so I can go from the Dakota Digital all the way to the negative side of the coil. And would you believe it? It fed right back into the unit. So that, believe, that leads me to believe this tack out off of the PCM is the same wire that goes to the negative side of the coil. They just have it uh, branched off. So what we did was we went back to our simple solution and just kept it under the dash rather than running another wire. All right, everybody, let's see. There's my tack wire, and then I heat shrink the uh, diode in there, and then I plugged it into the tack side. And we're going to fire this thing off here, and I'll loom it really nice and pretty in there, so that'll be fine. But that's the wire that feeds back to that PCM, man, and she'll feed back pretty good. Basically, it just won't shut the PCM off. It just won't let it go to sleep. Okay, let's go hot. Fuel pump, and then it shuts off. And we have our tack. Now, let's listen for it to go to sleep. Yep, and the relay kicks off. So she went to sleep. <laughs> That's what we needed. So guys, I wanted to share with you really quick. Um, calling Edelbrock was something I wanted to do and let them know what we found here at the shop. Um, but they were really instrumental in the first phone call I made to them on something that I had an assumption of that they verified, but I wanted to kick it back to them to let them know a simple diode fix will uh, take care of this because a tachometer issue and a feedback issue, not a nice thing to have. You have to share that circuit, and sharing that circuit, the only way to do it is a diode. Okay, everyone, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate you. We will see you very soon in the next video. Thanks, everyone.